Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity in the upper hand corner. We have Crossy starting as the Teal Zerg, bottom left hand corner. We have Gypsy starting as the Blue Terran. This is on Eclipse, and it is from the first set of August 19th, 2021 North American Team Battles. It is the second game in the series. I think the teams were listed in the previous game. If not, honestly, these are just kind of just group games for these guys to compete against one another and kind of show their chops and whatnot. I'm very excited about this game in particular. This is actually a recast. This is highlighting Gypsy's style, at least this opener of Terran in particular versus Zerg. And Crossy is the perfect opponent to kind of highlight this against because first of all, Gypsy's TVZ is incredible, but I would argue that Cro one of these guys, honestly, is probably the top player in North America at the moment, is the way I would assess things as things stand. And if not, they're definitely in the top five and there's arguments just all the way around that these, point being, they're incredible players. Definitely people that can make it to the high parts of BSL. I, actually, there was a show match played recently. Anyway, I won't get into all of that because it's kind of a distraction from a lot of this cast. Gypsy already starting to do a wall in. Check out Gypsy, by the way, at Gypsy93 on Twitch TV. Check out Crossy on uh, as Crossy. That's C-R-O-S-S-I-E-E, -E, I believe, on Twitch TV. Both fantastic streamers. Amazing players to watch play StarCraft. And again, I just want to, <laughs> aside from the potato internet, when people are trying to play one another. But uh, it's definitely one of those things where we're in a golden age of StarCraft, and I really appreciate getting these replays and even being able to cast them. And honestly, I feel like I've learned a lot. I feel like in particular I've been behind as far as the Terran side of this new meta, and Gypsy actually released a new video talking about some of the aspects of this play, which really corrected some of my thinking. So I recommend uh, checking that in particular. Primarily, the meta that I was used to, I don't know, a long time ago, was the three hatch meta against Terran, where you had a little bit, it, the biggest mistake I think it was making is, is oftentimes Terran's moving out to kind of force more mutalisks and things along those lines, uh, versus just trying to force something colonies off the two hatch play in the previous era of three hatch play when the mutalisks were coming out a little bit. Anyway, we'll get into that as the game continues. Looks like we are seeing a front door seal from Gypsy. One thing for Crossy, he's already got that extractor down that spawning pool building. I believe he opened up 12th hatch, should have been paying a little bit more attention. Yeah, definitely opened up a 12th hatch build. Gypsy's going to be able to wander in, go ahead and take a look at when that extractor is finished, which is key for him to go ahead and spot. And is also going to see that spawning pool. So he knows kind of the timing of everything that Crossy was up to. One thing I do want to uh, sing Crossy's praises is even with smaller units, we'll see if he will have to wait until the, the Zerglings actually spawn. But one thing he's really strong at is just denying his opponent's information or at least forcing them to expend more energy in scouting with his micromanagement. He's just kind of got that X factor. It looks like still managing to harass this SCV, or sorry, the, yeah, still managing to has the, uh, get a little bit of damage on that SCV before running, uh, returning home. He's not going to get that initial scout out. That's definitely going to put him in a little bit of an uncomfortable position, but I don't think that's going to change anything he's doing. He's definitely going for a two hatch layer. It looks like no Zerglings out to really harass that SCV as of yet. Command center being built. But the one thing I do want to highlight is, this is, I missed it in the previous cast, this engineering bay being built in the left-hand corner. And this is engineering bay before Academy, and also sticking on a longer first barracks. And I actually really love this, uh, check out Gypsy's YouTube video tutorial on this sort of thing, but I really love this build in particular in this current meta, because the current meta is, uh, and look at this, without even Zergling Speed doing a pretty good job of giving Gypsy a hard time with the scout and actually hunting him down. It's just, and it looks like that layer is just about finished. He is opening up two hatch plays. So current meta is two hatch, flood some Zerglings, or sorry, flood Mutalisks out there, try to keep the turn back, get your third gas established, and play the game from there. Doing a little bit of spare damage, only five health left on that SCV as it's swinging back around. Still wants to try to stay alive as long as possible. And actually no third hatchery yet from Crossy. Crossy placing that Spire now. We'll see if he takes that uh, third hatchery a little bit later. But in this build, Gypsy sticks on one barracks a little bit longer, gets that academy after, it starts weapons one rather, uh, rather rapidly, and then gets that engineering bay, opens up with stim, and then there's basically a small window where essentially, and I like the Zergling Flood, now there's that additional drone actually moving out to go ahead and get that additional hatchery, but that spire about a third finished along that way. Uh, looks like that SCV scout was in fact killed, but basically gets an early weapons one, gets an early stim, gets early range, and then there's a much smaller window where Weapons 1 is not online effectively. And so you end up with a little bit of a period of time where you have to defend against the incoming Mutalisks, but the Mutalisks just seem to take so much more damage because of that level 1 weapons before they hit either level 1 Carapace or level 1 uh, weapons themselves, which makes them much more fragile, which makes a Zerg's job of trying to keep that Medic Marine Ball back or try to preserve Mutalisks and 
prevent Terran from taking territory or just kind of marching across the field and threatening various things. It makes it that much harder. Crossy, in the meantime, has some Zerglings on this front door is looking to be a threat. First Medic is out. We do see additional three additional barracks being plopped down and Stim on the way. The Spire just finishing and expecting to see... So typically with this build, you see initial five and then uh, three Mutalisks with the next round to follow once the gas is there. It looks like we already have six in production. It looks like Rossi is going weapons one, which is something that he's favored in a lot of his builds, is kind of getting the, the three hatch going weapons one, relying on his strong Mutalisk micro to push his opponents back, picking off lots of Medic Marines, and then pressing into the mid game from there. Missile turret actually <laughs> trapping an SCV briefly uh, in that corner. So missile turret's already on the way for Gypsy, and he's going to need that. Because Crossy just has very, very strong Mutalisk grass. Five Mutalisk, six Mutalisk actually already up in the air. And there's currently no... So it looks like he's already protected his natural expansion. He's got several turrets. And you can see just really res dropping four there in that back corner. But a little bit of delay to this corner. And Crossy actually entering from the north with this Mutalisk grass And might be able to find a soft area to engage. Because this turret's still not up. It looks like a, delaying a little bit. Uh, waiting for maybe the, the full cadre of eight. So now entering with six, that is enough to pick off an SCV, and he is going to find an SCV to pick off, delaying that turret to the north and getting in the SCV line on top of everything else. So Gypsy, and wow, just grouping up, and that shows you the strength. So just finding the hole somewhere in that defense. Maybe it was just the Overlord seeing the two turrets right here. I'm not sure how Crossy had the instinct to do that. In the meantime, the forward barracks has been lifted off. It's moving back to... Uh, I guess join the rest of the barracks for macro purposes and the medic marines starting to move out Gypsy wants to make sure actually clearing some of those zerglings wants to make sure he gets out of that base So those mutalisks aren't just sitting and harassing anything else. It looks like crossing. This is another thing I actually learned from the video that uh, Gypsy produced I do want to highlight this is so that medic marine ball moving out and you can see I actually missed a bit of engagement One mutalisk actually decently damaged and this is where Crossy has to play it very very carefully He's looking for reinforcements of medic marines moving out so you can go ahead and pick them off so he's kind of i think he's doing that to pick kind of a, a backwards direction but he's actually already halfway across the map getting one marine right there but still you can see one mule is already extremely damaged and this is kind of the dance in the mid game this is how many medic marines can you pick off and preserve your mutalist ball on this stage and this this is what crossy's doing with just the initial eight trying to get lurker tech up does have a lurker building right there. He went to the Hydral Stone. This is a very standard build stuff thus far. Level 1 weapons, not quite online. Once weapon level 1 weapons does hit, uh, that makes the turrets even easier to take down. It can make the Medic Marines, uh, even basically the grouping, a little bit easier to, to kill. Overlords, I love the Overlord placement. Going ahead and seeing those Marines across the middle field. 12 o'clock base, a bit exposed. The lurker's not quite in position yet. Gypsy diving up. The lurker is burrowing, but I... Not sure if that was the position it looked or it was looking for, but with just eat a single lurker and the Mulesk support, Gypsy not quite able to get in that 12 o'clock location. There is a single Sutton Colony down, a second Sutton Colony being dropped with that level on weapons. Crossy feeling confident that he can go ahead and circle around, do some harassment perhaps at the main. In the meantime, he's diving and taking off those straggling reinforcements. And with this amount of Mulesks, he might actually be able to, and that lurker, he actually might be able to go turn around, start harassing the main. There are three turrets, though, already in that back corner. Maybe he can start harassing over that barracks line, see if he finds a pocket to do so there. He's pretty well entrenched at his front. He's already got, looks like, two lurkers burrowed on top of one another at that 12 o'clock location, so Gypsy is going to have to come back and play defensively. Those three, three turrets grouping them there. There are Marines to group up, so nice play from Crossy there. Several Mutalisks getting taken out, though, because of Gypsy, I think, being well-prepared, realizing that there was an opportunity for Crossy to counterattack and overbuilding turrets in the north just to prevent that exact sort of play so both players kind of resetting however i do feel like crossy got the better part of that bargain overall mostly because he's established his third gas exactly what he wants to do he's at hive tech he's got his evolution chamber down going for carapace his defiler mount is not too far behind he's also got that nidus canal on the way and gypsy uh does have a double it looks like he's got that first star port up doesn't have that second star port uh, is working on that second starport science facility not there yet and so there's kind of this window right here where the science vessels are not in the air so those mutalisks can still be a threat although I'm looking for where they position themselves lost them somewhere on the map looks like creep colonies being dropped to the north with that uh, science facility. did I miss them just getting annihilated by the medic marine force out in the middle I hope I didn't irradiate being researched no it looks like the mutalisks are actually just huddled up in the main looking to provide kind of a, dis a defensive posture 
kind of in the mid game. Already a couple Scourge out as well, maybe to dive on the initial science vessels that are going to be fielded by Gypsy. Gypsy moving out. I like that he has a Marine camp in the bottom right hand corner, just kind of camping uh, additional Marines, looking for that fourth base. Adrenal upgrades on the way as well. And just playing forward position. So from here, what Gypsy likes doing is his and I think most Terrans like doing it the, at this stage, but Gypsy in particular likes playing this defensive play. Oh, the Mules look like they're going to find a group of Medic Marines reinforcing here. Able to take an additional Mutalus Scout. And another Mutalus on top of it. I think also what happened there is, is there was a reduction in the overall Mutalus count, which with the uh, Marines with that level 1 armor made it where Gypsy or what Crossy was feeling less confident in his ability to harass that front line. Initial, but basically what Gypsy likes doing is, is going ahead and moving these mar medic marines up and then just going ahead and dropping all sorts of gaseous clouds in the form of radiate on all of those big important units specifically defilers specifically ultralisks and i'm wondering if crossy's going to delay things a little bit and rely a little bit more on zerglings instead of the ultralisks as a result of that play the mutalisks with those scourge and actually the scourge pocketed in the scourge breaking out not quite able to get on the science vessels so nice protection there from gypsy but that was really heads up on crossy to kind of cloak those in there two additional hatcheries being plopped down Ev second evolution chamber being dropped level one carapace is coming online but currently gypsy does have level one weapons level one armor and is getting he's about got that engineering bay about halfway finished so i think he is going to be able to preserve an upgrade advantage as things persist, there's the initial irradiate on that Mutalisk. Only two Mutalisks left, one Overlord getting it pocketed. Now he's sitting very firmly in that position where he can, yeah, drop those irradiates that he's looking to and see if he can keep them away from those Scourge in the meantime. Dropping a Dark Swarm, which is able to allow a few Zerglings to get a handful of kills, but Crossy boxed into three bases. Now the question is, is will he be able to break out and get a fourth before Gypsy is able to establish his third? It looks like somehow, how did he get a drone out here? A drone was managed to uh, just somehow snuck out here and got into this upper left-hand corner. And there's a hatchery building here. I don't know if Gypsy is aware of it, unfortunately. Gypsy, again, feeling like he's got the advantage right now. Ooh, science vessels exposed. One science vessel down. Still three science vessels out in the air. It looks like that Mulus is going to get picked off while Crossy not quite uh, paying attention. Some of the Scourge going to get picked off as well. Kind of a rare missed micro uh, from Crossy. But Gypsy, again, holding the position on the forward ground. It looks like another Defiler is going to get picked off. An open field Zergling is just kind of flooding out. So Gypsy holding, or sorry, uh, Crossy holding this front door. But what this is allowing... Gypsy to do is just irradiate all these key units. Nice plague on the front, catching a lot of these medic marines. The science vessel going down in the corner as well. The zerglings trying to trail and pick something off, but this is kind of the critical component here. Is I believe this base is up, and Gypsy does not know about it. The question is, is will Crossy be able to saturate it, get an Idis Canal up there, and then hold it to follow? I believe a command center. Yeah, it looks like a command center being built. It's going to go ahead and move out to that nine o'clock location. Continued engagements on the front, but Gypsy still holding a nice. Pseudo contain in the middle of the maps. A couple Dark Swarm going down, but the Zerglings just getting wiped out left and right. Second ha or Nidus Canal is being established in that upper left hand corner. And so this will be this is critical moments of the match where things are really gonna swing heavily in Crossy's favor, especially if he can go ahead and get that fourth gas down. Getting additional gas allows, you know, everything. Zerg tech wise. I like the. This is kind of a thing we've seen recently spore colonies with the plague, uh, just especially if you can drop spore colonies plagues on the science vessels. In particular, the spore colonies all of a sudden pick off all sorts of science vessels very, very rapidly. Zerglings and some nice swarms from Crossy going ahead and pushing Gypsy back. A lot of Scourge getting picked off in the air. But Gypsy's done a really good job when he's had the irradiates going ahead and pushing those irradiates down and really not losing all that much as far as attack forces on the front. Crossy has pushed him back off the front lines a little bit, but really hasn't gotten a lot of medic marine kills uh, out of this. So Gypsy is sitting at 100 and just a, a lot of supply. That's not game-winning supply, I do not think, at this stage of the match, but he's still in a, a really strong position overall. The Zerglings spawning from the upper left. I, I got to think Gypsy's going like, how the hell did these Zerglings get here? But going through the Nidus Canal all the way around that, and keep in mind there's two gas here, so there's a lot of gas to be harvested. Uh, for Crossy in that upper left-hand corner. In the meantime, those Zerglings just getting obliterated. It looks like there was a nice plague that I missed in the middle. Science vessels, though, still stand. And this is critical. If that science vessel fleet continues to grow and Crossy doesn't get anything the air to counter it, even with these Ultralists, they're just going to get irradiated, softened up, 
and Gypsy's just going to continually have these heavily upgraded, continuing to be heavily upgraded medic marines that will just peel through those ultras very rapidly. Some Zergling sneaking through, looking to get something accomplished. Crossy in a desperate situation. Gypsy does have that third base. Looks like the medic marines were able to clear out that comps that might burn down, but honestly, not a huge loss right there. So Crossy trying to find some ground where he can go ahead and break this contain. He Keep in mind, he does have this fourth up. He's getting that second gas. This is... This is be the thing, is does that get scouted by Gypsy? And does Gypsy, is it Gypsy able to to take that out? Looks like an Overlord picked off in midfield. Gypsy close to 200 supplies, so Crossy looking like he's in a lot of trouble. A lot of fire bats on the ground as Gypsy's moving up to go ahead and take his fourth. I think he's thinking at this stage, I'm just going to go ahead and starve Crossy out. I'm not sure if he's even still, if he's aware of this. Looks like a couple of <laughs> Sun Colonies, they're out. Uh, I don't think that's... Even at this stage of things, we would defy they're getting wiped out in front. Even at this stage of things, it looks like some Zerglings flooding down with some Ultralis to go ahead and try to engage at this fourth base before it's established. A nice Dark Swarm, and Gypsy has to be wondering, like, how the hell did this get out here without me noticing? Uh, unless he is... I, I gotta assume he's aware of that base in the upper left hand corner at this stage of things. More Looks like some Radiates dropping. It's gonna be able to kill these units. He is gonna be able to salvage this base. Another Science also getting taken out overhead, and the Medic Marines pushing back. But while this, and it looks like some Scourge trying to move this uh, to this location, but this is going to be the critical piece. It's going to be Whack-A-Mole with the Science Vessels and more or less who has the more favorable exchanges. Like if the Science Vessels keep irradiating all of these big hefty units, Crossy will end up losing this game eventually just because Gypsy is going to have the more efficient trades in the long run. However, if Gypsy is able to just keep going up, harassing, dropping Radiates, especially on the Defilers, the Ultralisks, uh, whatever sort of gas heavy units he can eventually crossy is going to end up getting starved out a couple a couple mules running up however these actually i think they have enough radiates to just drop on it looks like they are going to get back to the medic marines you usually don't want to just drop a, an irradiate on a single mulesk or whatnot but the, doing a little bit of damage there gypsy also camped in that bottom right hand corner with a group of medic marines making sure that crossy can't grab anything else an ultralisk and a defiler moving into that location there's also a counterattack moving in through that nine o'clock and Gypsy's also swinging around to go ahead and try to get a chokehold on that front door. This is going to cause, this should cause a cancellation on a lot of this, and a lift. And so Gypsy going to go ahead and be denied a fourth base, but Crossy's still sitting on four bases himself. Looks like the Ultralisk was taken out in that bottom right hand corner. Level two weapons, level one armor, and I think this Medic Marine should easily be able to deal with these Zerglings. Actually, I take it back. Those Zerglings with the Adrenal upgrade chewing through those Medic Marines uh, fairly, fairly rapidly. Uh, despite everything else. So Crossy with some big swings here, able to wipe out that attack force on that bottom right, maybe take position there. Is Gypsy still holding the front? A plague looks like it managed to catch a single science vessel. This the science vessel count honestly seems a little bit uh, smaller than maybe even missed some science vessels being kicked out or wiped off the map uh, in the middle of a lot of this. But Gypsy in a little bit of trouble now as Crossy able to find some ground and actually forcing him to lift off that nine o'clock base as well. There's the rest of science vessels grouping. So eight overall wow look at that spray on that ultralist that ultra is still with all those carapace upgrades still standing so level four carapace level one weapons and gypsy now having where he was it just seemed like had a, th a throttle hold crossy able to interrupt all of the mining along the left hand side of the map and really make a match of it gypsy trying to press back out looking to hunt some more ultras to do some more radiates and it looks like he's now going to start exploring this upper left hand corner looks like an scv of all things might be able to scout this out. He might, be, he might be able to deny this as well. Let's see. Now finding it a huge plague, though, for that information. So now discovering this mining base. I'm, I have to feel that he just didn't see it. And it looks like, ooh, one science vessel is going to get taken out. A second science vessel is getting taken out uh, with a bit of risk there. I think he wanted to drop those irradiates uh, sooner rather than later. And that SCV wandering with some minerals is a gift. But I think he was just trying to defect. That's what was happening there with that SCV. He's like, take me with you. I want to be a Zerg now. And it's like, no, the Zerg, that's not how we, that's not how we do things. You gotta do or die here, guys. This is this is StarCraft. It basically should be Star Wars, but that name was copyright. Anyway, Ultralis diving, oof, Plague, which is gonna make these Medic Marines very soft, and even though it's a single Ultralis, you can just see they're devouring that one. And the Mutalisk, almost able to get on top of the Science Vessels. A single Bouncing Glaive would have been able to take out an immense amount of Science Vessels right there. The Science Vessels actually should be pulled back uh, into safety, but it looks like instead just trying to sit here, drop a radiates and contain. This is very risky, honestly. Some Scourge looked like they're moving up to go ahead and wipe that Science Vessel count out, but it looks, it looks like that 1 o'clock base is going to drop for Crossy. The Science Vessel's trying to pull out. It looks like several Science Vessels getting wiped out. That's dropping the count to 5, and more Zerglings still flooding in to the 9 o'clock base to go ahead and try to disrupt mining here, which is going to be critical because Gypsy is now mined out of his main. His natural expansion is just mined out, so he still wants to have two bases to keep up with Crossy's ability to produce. Actually, you're reading one of his own Science Vessels. 
I don't think that was for Racer Track. Might have been a, uh, to protect against a Scourge that was incoming. If you can kind of, sometimes if you can micro it well enough, uh, you can make something happen there. Semitic Marines moving into this upper left-hand corner. Maybe he can wipe out that Ninus I think he was able to halt a little bit of gas, but a counterattack at that 9 o'clock location. Ultralisks and Zerglings moving in. And once again, Gypsy forced to lift. He's going for a counterattack. Just going to try to push through these Sutton colonies right here. These are level three weapon. These are fully upgraded Marines at this stage, so they should be able to peel through this base fairly rapidly. Some lurkers landing right there. There should be some comps. Actually, he might be down some comps at because of those lifted command centers. So having to back off initially. And the lurkers actually look like they're going to be with the defiler and the swarm going to be able to clear things out. And while that's happening, this command center has been lifted off. So Gypsy losing control of this match. Crossy, f smelling blood in the water, starting to field units up. He's got a supply lead all of a sudden. Z some units being killed, but Mulus almost able to get on top of the science vessel. It looks like those, many of them were repaired. St two of them still are in just a sliver of health. Scourge getting picked off in the air, and it is chaos everywhere. And usually when there's chaos across the map, it usually means it is favoring your Zerg player, especially when it's ground forces. Crossy has taken that bottom right-hand base. It's not quite saturated yet. This upper left-hand base is looking a little worse for wear, but it is operating. Specifically, it's gathering that uh, gas, which is absolutely critical. But Gypsy is now somewhat starved off, where he's having to float a command center. Look, I think he lifted it off and pulled it back, but he's going to have to float and transfer some SCVs up here. Actually running in with the SCVs on, on top of an irradiated Ultralisk. Man, that's, got, that's a cruel command right there. That's like a brutal, it's like, go and mine. Just, I don't care that there's a gigantic beast that's completely radioactive and, and tossing a ton of uh, goo out there. Crossy going ahead and consolidating his forces, looking for a potential counterattack. There's a bunch of lurkers in case these medic marines ever wanted to go on the low ground. There's some irradiates to drop on top of them, but that looks like it's going to cost, whoop, it's going to do some damage on one of these science vessels. Actually, another one, it looks like it's going to be able to peel off. Big science vessel fleet, that's at least in Gypsy's favor. However, his economy has been absolutely battered. He's distance mining at the moment until this command center lands. Crossy does have this base in the bottom right-hand corner. His main is mined out. Uh, I actually caught that right this second. A handful of science vessels are still trying to radiate everything to this upper left-hand corner. But if Crossy can just saturate the bases he's got, he will be in a strong position to win this match. He's still got that 12 o'clock base running. His natural expansion is still uh, there a little bit. If he can transfer some units to that bottom right, it looks like Gypsy has some medics that are at least scouting that bottom right-hand corner. It looks like they were able to kill a defiler right there. But in the meantime, he's going to go ahead and try to wipe out this upper left-hand corner to stop that gas production. All sorts of Dark Swarm everywhere. There are some fire bats in the middle of this army, though. A Defiler pushing through, that's getting picked off. That Nidus Canal goes down. We can basically say bye-bye to this upper left-hand base. So that upper left-hand base looks like it is going to get wiped out. Fire Bats absolutely delighting as they're able to wipe out drones. A single Defiler trying, what a coward, hiding in that upper left-hand corner. Gypsies re-landed that base along the left-hand side, but more Scourge. And, wow, a lot of Scourge moving out. Wants to catch these Science Vessels to really try to cripple Gypsy's attack force. Gypsy looks like he was able to dodge, well, I wouldn't say dodge a bullet, dodge a Kamikaze? plane somewhere there some zerglings flooding through not quite able to get anything accomplished there but while that was happening it looks like crossy was able to get something and oof, those zerglings actually able to get in it looks like they are going to get a number of scv kills a medic trying to keep this scv line alive they are critical to this war effort at this stage of things so nine o'clock base and i guess the inside and lower nine both producing man these zerglings still being a pest right there gypsy abandoning the SCVs momentarily, regrouping. Looks like he wants to go ahead and engage somewhere in midfield, some Ultralisks, finding a juicy Medic Marine march that was not cohesive. Looks like Gypsy uh, falling apart a little bit in the midst of all this chaos. Gotta be frustrating. Some Scourge. Oh, they're gonna connect with a lot of Science Vessels. That is a huge loss for Gypsy, down to six Science Vessels. Another Plague dropped, which is gonna leave them soft for the next encounter. And Gypsy actually having to pull back a lot of his army just to hold things, and a single fire bat, I gotta give, this fire bat really loves his work, and you can tell. Like, he got a bunch of kills with the drones, he's happy in life. Looks like he is gonna be able to take that extractor out as well. Some more irradiates dropped on these Ultralisk slime, and the Ultralisk is just diving into these medic marines. And I'm not sure how many more, more of these irradiates are gonna be existence, because these science vessels, a little bit low on health, a single Mutalisk overhead, or even the Scourge, as they're pushing out, should be able to wipe this out. Crossy continuing. To do a pretty good job macroing, this bottom right hand base is oh, decently saturated. I think he's got enough map control where he might be able to go ahead and take yet another expansion. 
Especially with Gypsy desperately hoping to hold everything else. Some Zerglings look like they're sneaking. They want to go ahead and take another shot at that 9 o'clock location. They are flooding in to do so. Gypsy does have Medic Marines there. The Mutalists were looking to find the Science Vessels at this location. It looks like they are still to the south. Let's see if they go ahead and move there. And this is a quandary for Gypsy where he is going to have to go ahead and lift off and abandon this 9 o'clock base. It just seems like it's been in a persistent state of being lift off. There's the Science Vessels regrouping. He's done a fantastic job of keeping them grouped with the Medic Marines. The Mutalisks look like they might have gotten a Glaive shot off. A single Science Vessel moving up to go ahead and irradiate one of them. But Opportunity there for Crossy. Looks like some Medic Marines have managed to sneak out. They are going to be able to go ahead and take out this 5 o'clock base to try to hold Crossy back. And this is, going, this is turning into a huge war of attrition to see who, who can do more damage to whom. And, and who can starve whom out, effectively. At this stage of things, it looks like that 5 o'clock base has been wiped out. The Zerglings continue to flood, forcing another liftoff from Gypsy. And Gypsy is starved for minerals. It looks like these SCVs trying to flood out bring precious resources home. Zerglings harassing the entire way. Uh, grouping of Zerglings as well as that Mulisks overhead camping that base. And Gypsy is out of mining bases at this stage. He was able to go ahead and wipe out that 5 o'clock. But that bottom right hand base is mining for Crossy. That... 1 o'clock base is looking somewhat thin. That natural expansion is out. So Cross is going to need to find some resources for himself as well. It is about, we're even on supply. The Science Vessel fleet is still standing, but a little bit low. Firebats going ahead and finding a defiler and just happy to group kill right there. There was a plague dropped on some of these medic marines. <clears throat> a couple, looks like a couple Zerglings, I think. Oh, that Firebat hiding. He still lives. Maybe not the same Firebat, but he's, he's still around. That's good for him. Good for him. I'm happy that he's... Uh, out there. Z some Zerglings grouping up we'll want to go ahead and engage this Medic Marine Force while it's still plagued. Like, there's still kills to be had. Some more Ultras pressing forward, and now we're starting to see a swarm from Crossy push across the... push across to go ahead and attack this Medic Marine Ball before Gypsy's able to reestablish some lines. He knows that Gypsy's low on resources. If he can just wipe something out, if he can take out the Science Vessels, if he can reduce this Medic Marine Ball, maybe then he can go ahead and continue to get some additional bases and saturate some, something out there. Defiler's getting picked off. Irradiate's getting picked off. This Science Vessel fleet continues to hold. And Gypsy's done a fantastic job of basically keeping this alive on really a skeleton crew underneath it of Firebats, Marines, and a grouping of Medics. I think this is maybe two or three control groups of Medic Marines underneath. And just an unending onslaught it seems just as he's landing he's gonna have to lift off again because here's some more ultralists going ahead and diving into this and so yeah dropping immediately having to lift it back off crossies just seems to have an instinct for this sort of thing how did he even know it's like he just knew that that's the moment that gypsy was going to go ahead and try to land after that last major engagement and able to do some disruption right there some zerglings again getting amidst the scvs are they just going to get irradiated like that punish the scv line for allowing this to happen it looks like those zerglings are going to get wiped out but Gypsy finally able to go ahead and reestablish two bases. Crossy going to go ahead and take that 12 o'clock base. And he needs it because he is low on resources. Maybe he can go ahead and take that 5 o'clock as well, clearing that out with some Ultralisks. Uh, he's still, he's got a, amazing Carapace upgrades. Hasn't got an additional uh, melee upgrades. It looks like he's still going to eat some Irradiates. Another Science Vessel goes down for those handful of radiates being dropped, but it looks like Crossy, while well, that medic reinforces to the south, is uh, again able to get in underneath and engage that 9 o'clock location. Firebat's trying to group up. That's causing another liftoff, and Gypsy just under constant economic assault. Looks like that Ultra's going to go ahead and evacuate to the north. The Zergling's going to evacuate to the north. He, Crossy needs to preserve what he can. He's going to go ahead with this Ultralisk that's probably going to die to this Irradiate, grouping up and somehow managing to find... Uh, spacing to go ahead and attack a single marine. Not sure how that marine got out there uh, dying on the front Maybe just a scouting marine to go ahead and see how things are going the science vessel fleet of eight still holds As long as this is up in the air gypsy still has a very strong chance of winning this the zerglings grouping up to go ahead You can see both players very low on minerals in that upper right hand corner Looks like the drones group transferring to get those precious resources at 12 o'clock. There is a drone waiting in that 5 o'clock location as well. But Gypsy also getting some breathing room. Let's see if he can go ahead and replenish the much-needed reinforcements. Medic Marines, Firebats moving up to that 12 o'clock location. There is a defiler, but we'll see how this works with the upgrades overall. The Firebats can shoot through those Zerglings fairly rapidly. And with those Medic Marine support, it looks like they are going to be able to do so. The Defiler still lives, but they're just going to walk through with, with everything left. But now there's an Ultralisk uh, grouping up as well. A counterattack of Zerglings, and Ultralisk is going to go ahead and do a little bit of delay. 
for the rest of that medic marine ball. It's going to get, that attack force is going to get eaten alive. It looks like there's additional radiates being dropped there. Crossy was able to repel that attack to the, uh, to the 12 o'clock location. He's able to get that gas up, continuing to hold. And Gypsy just going ahead and guarding the left-hand side of the map to get his resources reestablished. Well, so basically both players licking their wounds, looking for opportunities to get better exchanges. And thus far, I'm not sure who to call it for. Really don't. Uh, both directions. Ooh, another science vessel getting picked off. And oh, two science vessels getting picked off. That is not good for Camp Gypsy here. Some science vessels able to sneak through. Maybe they can get an eraser done. They're going to have to dodge some scourge. This is a very risky play. Another science vessel getting picked off. Honestly, Gypsy overextending a little bit with those science vessels. I think he, need, he was hoping to take that risk to go ahead and do some economic interruption. Felt like it was perhaps worth it. Especially at these late stages of this match. However, Crossy uh, and just uh, moving on those Medic Marines rather than attack move. And as a result, a lot of Medic Marines and even some Fire Bats exploding to just a handful of Zerglings. Crossy counterattacking with Ultralisks and Zerglings, forcing yet another liftoff at the lower 9 o'clock base. SCV's evacuating to go ahead and go to the upper 9 o'clock base. There's a single Zergling in the line right there, which already, well, it looks like it's a little bit confused. He's just going to go ahead and hang out. He's like tired of this war as well. 12 o'clock base has been wiped out by Gypsy, but bottom right hand base is mining. It looks like that science... Oh, the science vessel is getting wiped out, and that's really a big key thing here. Bottom right hand base has been wiped out. 5 o'clock base is just establishing. It looks like maybe we'll see some drones transferred to that location. Both players just about even on workers, which usually puts things in Zerg's advantage if they're up one base. Currently, though, it looks like it is basically two base Zerg versus two base Terran, which in theory would be advantage to Gypsy if he can just continue to mine here and not have to lift things off constantly. His science vessel fleet, though, is gone, and he I don't see any additional science vessels replenishing this grouping. He is able to get in on top of this 5 o'clock base as the drones are scattering, getting obliterated right there. This could be the, the final nails in the coffin for Crossy. Ultralisk is there to try to defend this. The Marines spreading themselves out to go ahead and wipe out what they can to go ahead and take this hatchery out. It looks like they are going to be able to finish that hatchery. Another drone's right there to go ahead and try to rebuild. Some Zerglings and Defilers right there. It looks like there's also uh, it looks like a drone hiding in that bottom right-hand corner. But Crossy just very much out of resources. Gypsy still holding on two bases, continuing to replenish his army. And it looks like more science vessels are started. Well, finally, a science vessel able to get back overhead. Two science vessels, ooh, a little bit... Stranded, there are Scourge nearby. Looks like one of them is going to get taken out. He's able to at least irradiate a drone before leaving, getting a little bit uh, a little bit overly aggressive there. But now the Medic Marine Force has grown to a sizable count. Looks like a 40 supply lead for Gypsy in the late stages of this match. Crossy mined out at his main, mined out his natural expansion, mined out at the 1 o'clock base. This base has been wiped out. Upper left-hand base, which was once in Crossy's favor, is kind of like you have corpses of extractors that have been left at these various expansions. A big fight going to happen around that 5 o'clock base. Crossy is mining in that bottom right-hand corner, but if he can go ahead and establish that 5 o'clock, maybe he can sneak away back in this match. Very much needs the resources. Ultral is pinning with some nice Dark Swarm, pinning some Medic Marines in that corner, but that is going to force a cancellation. That drone is going to get wiped out, and that might be it for Crossy here. He's now mining essentially on one base, and Gypsy's still mining on two. Science Vessel count is increasing, and the Medic Marine Ball is starting to get large. It's starting to move straight up to that natural expansion. He's looking for blood at this stage of the match and should be able to find it. it looks like some Zerglings snuck through, but we do have some bunkers to deal with these... Zerglings, and there's no Defiler to provide any backup. Scourge trying to get on top of those science vessels. The Medic Marines not allowing it to happen. Plenty of Fire Bats as well, and I think right now Gypsy can just go ahead and take whatever he wants on the map. He's got a large enough Medic Marine Force. He's got the upgrades to do. He's got science vessels to provide detection. Just, wow. A grouping around that Ultralisk. Wiping it out. Took, took some time, but not letting it go anywhere. And Gypsy once again... Let's see, he's got a, he could honestly attack anywhere, I think, and maybe finish this match off. He can go attack to the natural expansion of the main, he can attack, to, uh, looks like he's continued to wipe out that 5 o'clock base. Crossy's still going to call GG, I think, realizing that, that Gypsy had the economic lead, had the death grip, and Crossy just ran out of resources. So Gypsy holding under, honestly, constant economic onslaught. Control, doing a fantastic job of map control, top to bottom, and a really fun match overall. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.